Good morning, and I want to welcome you to our worship today here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Woodstock, Georgia. I am Kat Ontiveros, the Youth Ministry Coordinator, and today is the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. We are continuing to offer Holy Communion here at Good Shepherd on Sunday mornings. We have two shifts available, the first being from 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m., and the second from 10.45 a.m. to 12.15 p.m. We are also looking for volunteers to help set up and clean up and serve communion. We would like to have two people for each shift. You will be required to wear a mask. There is a sign-up sheet on our website on Sign Up Central Online. Today marks the first confirmation class of the year. We will be meeting from 12.30 to 1.30. Since we are unable to meet in person, this meeting will be via Zoom. The links were sent out earlier in the week. We have many online Sunday school and Christian education offerings. We start Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. with an adult class called Coffee and Conversation, which is led by Ben Setzer. Our middle school class starts at 10.30 a.m. and our high school class meets Sunday evenings at 8 p.m. All of these classes meet via Zoom. For our younger youth, our Sunday school coordinator, Janice Swinford, pre-records weekly lessons for you. You can find them on our website under the Sunday School page. We are happy to welcome into the kingdom of God through the waters of baptism, Kirsten Renee Peters. She was baptized during a special outdoor service on August 15th. She is the daughter of Ryan and Stephanie Peters. Our men in mission group continue to meet virtually on Wednesday evenings. They are expected to complete their current book this week and will move on to another book titled More Than a Carpenter by Josh McDowell. If you would like to join them, please contact our media coordinator, Donna, at media at gslutheran.org, and we can send you the link to this meeting. We had a record high of 62 units of blood at our last blood drive. We'd like to thank all of you who donated. We are still collecting food for Must Ministries. Please leave your donations in the blue bin located on the porch, and we thank you for continuing to support this ministry. This year, Lutheran Coalition's annual fundraiser has a new title, The Untaste of Habitat. A donation form and information can be found in the bulletin and on our website under Community Outreach Current Outreach page. We would also like to thank those who are continuing to support our congregation financially. We couldn't continue doing ministries without you. More detailed information about these items as well as other items can be found in today's worship bulletin. Now let us prepare our hearts for worship.
Give me a love divided heart That I might fear your name Teach me to walk in righteous paths And follow in your ways For you are gracious whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. 
We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Save and defend us, O oh God. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you know. Remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you, for I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is from chapter 26. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. 
Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers, and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence, and go around your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. The second reading is from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil and hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them, and if they're thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? 
for the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Ooh, he doesn't have it. So close, so close, but he dropped the ball. Thankfully, the game's not over. Last Sunday, our gospel reading narrated Peter's great declaration of Jesus' identity. At the time, there was a lot of speculation about who Jesus was, so Jesus asked the disciples who they said he was. Peter came up with the right answer. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus was thrilled by Peter's answer and blessed him for recognizing the truth about Jesus that God was revealing. Not only that, Jesus noted that Peter would be involved with the formation of the church and Jesus gave Peter power to bind and loose things in heaven and earth. From that time on, however, things changed. There is a dramatic shift in the gospel story at this point. For a while, there won't be any more parables or crowds or public instructions or opponents. From that time on, Jesus began instructing his disciples in the way of discipleship. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. He must go to Jerusalem. That was God's plan a plan in which Jesus was a willing participant. Apparently, even though Peter realized and declared Jesus' correct identity, Messiah, Son of the living God, Peter also had some ideas about what that meant, especially after he received such praise from Jesus about who Jesus was. So Peter, so recently enlightened and boldly confessional, regained the full scope of his humanity. As the words came out of his mouth, Peter dropped the ball. He went from rock to stumbling block. God forbid it, Lord, Peter replied to Jesus' description of coming things. Peter was thinking the way that we are all conditioned to think. He was thinking about human success. Even motivated by his honor of Jesus and his friendship with Jesus, Peter couldn't see how suffering and martyrdom could be included in being the Messiah, the Son of the living God. But God's plan did include it. Earlier in the gospel story in Jesus' original temptations in the wilderness, we heard that after Jesus said no to all the temptations, Satan left waiting for an opportune time to tempt Jesus again. This was apparently an opportune time, so Satan showed up in Peter. If someone is heading toward suffering and martyrdom, don't you think they probably wouldn't mind being talked out of it? 
That's what Satan was going for. Jesus choosing an easier way than God's way, which is a very human response. Choosing an easier way than God's way. When Jesus called Peter Satan and told Peter to get behind him, he wasn't suggesting that Peter needed an exorcism and he wasn't lining up the disciples for a drill. He was, number one, saying no to Satan's latest temptation, and number two, telling Peter where disciples should be, literally and philosophically, following the master. So far, the disciples had followed without fully considering or understanding the consequences. They had seen Jesus do some amazing things. They had enjoyed some great sermons. They had heard some awesome stories. There had not been any real danger attached to Jesus or a disciple of Jesus. But from that time on, they had to know if any want to become disciples of Jesus, they must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow him. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their lives for Jesus' sake will find it. Followers of Jesus must deny themselves. That fits right in with our cult cultural norm, doesn't it? No. We are a culture of self-fulfillment, and denying ourselves anything is challenging. And Jesus wasn't even especially talking about giving up things. Jesus was talking about an orientation of life that is not focused on yourself. He was talking about living a life of faith that makes everything different. He was talking about reorienting oneself to the good news that God has acted decisively in Jesus and that life and the world changed from that day on. Jesus isn't a guy with some good advice on how to live. He is a savior making all things new. Deny yourself and take up your cross. I'm pretty sure you won't hear that from preachers and churches that tell you being a disciple of Jesus means you will prosper and have lots of material wealth or that everything will be right in your world or you'll live in constant happiness. If that's what they are saying, they didn't get it from Jesus. If you ever hear someone defining discipleship without mentioning a cross, you're probably not listening to the best source. Taking up your cross is one of the most specific things Jesus says about discipleship. What does it mean to take up a cross? It does not mean accepting something bad that's going on in your life, like a crotchety spouse or a difficult boss or a hard teacher or even COVID-19. It isn't making the best of a bad situation in your life. Taking up your cross is voluntary and active. It is following God's will and purposes at all costs, even your life. Other teachers than Jesus wanted their disciples simply to learn their teachings and pass them on. The goal was for disciples to become masters themselves. Jesus 
call disciples to countercultural action in the world, in a permanent status of follower, no matter the cost. From that time on, the disciples began to learn what discipleship really was. They began to learn its cost as they journeyed to Jerusalem. It has to be learned on the journey. That is great encouragement for those who think they understand very little about discipleship and a great warning for those who think they know a great deal. You have to learn discipleship as you go. I thought I knew a great deal about the world prior to the coronavirus. Now I'm not so sure about so many things. Now I have to ask new questions about being a disciple of Jesus. You have to learn it as you go. You have to learn what genuine love is, how to hate what is evil and hold fast to what is good, to love one another, to serve the Lord, to rejoice in hope, to be patient in suffering, to persevere in prayer, to bless those who persecute you, to live in harmony with all, to deny yourself, to take up your cross. Thankfully, the game's not over. Amen. Yes, sir. 
instrument of God's care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you, especially in this time of COVID-19, and our separation of Christians one from another. Lord, in your mercy. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities. Lord, in your mercy. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give us those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick, including those in our continuing prayers list and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy. God of all grace, you give us everlasting life. In love, we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light. In our remembering, give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Lord, in your mercy. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The peace of the Lord be with you. God's be with you all. God's peace. Peace be with you. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.
forgives, forgives, heals, and sets us free. I believe in a love that loses itself for the sake of life, for someone else. I believe in that love, I believe, I believe in that love. I believe in that love, I believe, I believe in that love. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.